Hello Crafters, it's Michelle Brown here, Creative Director from Picture to Page and Beyond and welcome to our very first craft with us. Now I'm hoping you're going to be able to find us. So we are hanging out in the Paper Craft Posse group under the Craft With Us event. So hopefully a few of you will be able to find us once we get along and spend some crafting time together. So I can see there's at least one person there, a couple, excellent. So I hope you can hear us. Let me know if you have any trouble. And what we're gonna to do today is do some casual watercolor doodling. Now I know, you know, we're in unprecedented times. We are all in such different situations. Some people are still required to go to work. Some people have been at home, dare we say stuck at home working. Some people are out of work. Some people, their lives are still going on as normal. Some people have had really disrupted lives. So I realized that we're all in very, very different situations. I think what we do now is really just be patient with ourselves, acknowledge the way that we're feeling. There's no wrong way to feel, but also realize that if we're getting a bit frustrated with each other and with ourselves, that perhaps there's a few underlying things going on and we really just need to take a step back pause and acknowledge our feelings and of course we are going to craft on. So that is the plan for today. So I hope you've got your bits and pieces together. I'm now going to adjust the camera and we will get ourselves started. So hold on. Now this one's probably going to be a little bit clunky but that's okay. We will see how we go. Now, I'm not going to be able to see the comments as we go but I'll come back and check in a little bit. So like we said, today we're gonna to do some casual watercolor. So I have got together a handful of things here that we're going to need. The first thing I've got is my art journal and some card. I've got some watercolor. So I have found recently all of my twinkling H2Os. Who of you have got those that you remember we had somewhere and haven't used them for ages? I've got some watercolor pencils. I've got neo color. I've got gelatos, I've got distressed crayons, I've got distressed watercolour paint, scribble sticks and let's have a play. Now to be honest I've only used that YouTube video as inspiration. I haven't actually had a go at this myself so we will all be learning together. Okay so I'll give you a minute or two to get all your things together and then we'll get started. Just going to quickly check the comments. Is there anything else? We're all good. Excellent. Okay, so if you do have any comments, pop them below and we will sort them out as we go. So like I said, watercolour doodles. I find that when we're under great duress, it's sometimes hard to do any complex crafts. So what we want to do is some nice, simple ones today. Uh, so the other things I have is some water and a paintbrush. Use your aqua brush if you've got one. Can't find mine since the show. Um, I've also got just a spray bottle that does a really nice fine spray of water. And I've also got an acrylic block that we'll use for a couple of different techniques that I've been thinking of as well. But like I said, I haven't actually given any of this a go myself, so we will have a play. So I've got a few different journals to work with as well, because of course we want to make sure that we let our watercolour dry before we paint, um, doodle on top of it. So the pens that I've grabbed for doodling is a micron pen, a gold pen and a white Posca pen. But like I said, we don't want to use those until we're ready to go. So I've got a visual journal and then I've also got my Dil Dilutions journal here as well. So let's get ourselves organised. So I'm hoping you've been able to set your phone or computer up so you can have your crafting stuff out as well. So let's get a new page. I really love this Dilutions journal because it has such a nice soft texture. Now, where will we start? I will really want to play it with my H2O. So I'm going to pull out a few colours. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to start with similar colours. So I'm going to pull out, predictably, a blue, a teal, and then maybe a purple. And then what we're going to do is activate these. Now, the thing that I found with watercolours is you need to be a little bit patient from when you get water on them until you can get started because it takes a little while for the water to activate them. So I'm going to give them a bit of a spray and we'll give those just a few, min a few minutes. And what we're looking at doing is creating a really simple background and then adding some um, doodles on top. So let me just check that you can all see that. That is all visible. Excellent, that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do quite simply 
is wet my brush. Now the challenge of course is we don't want it to be too wet so wet it and just dry it off a little bit and I want just that we want to feel that it's damp but it's not wet. I think using the back of our hand is the best way to do that. So then I'm going to take the first colour. Now, of course, the fun with watercolour is that you can get quite of a different effect out of it with the amount of water. So let's just start with a little strip. I'm going to dip my brush back in the water and dilute it a little bit further. There we go. And just create some simple stripes. Now, I've probably still got some more colour left in that. So what I'm going to do is grab this piece of card and, you know, just do something similar as well. And you can see how I'm already starting to pull that colour out of it. Okay, then give our brush a good wash. Because with any of these watercolours, you can actually blend them. So if we're not careful, we'll end up making mud. That's why we're going to start with similar colours. And then again, grab our next colour, perhaps add a little bit more water if we think they're too thick. Said, And then add, okay, maybe that was a bit too much water. Like I said, haven't done any practice with this. Now you can see here, being a little bit more watery, I've actually blended the colour a little bit having similar colours that's okay and then again adding some colour to that washing our brush out again making sure it's not too wet and then again our next colour Like I said, the thing with watercolours is they can be a little bit inconsistent. So have a play around with what you've got. Try adding a little bit more water. Try using a bit less. Try different surfaces. And just get, see what they can do. Okay. Now I'm going to set those ones aside. And then we will come back and have a doodle on those when they're a bit drier. Because the last thing we want to do is to ruin our pens. Because I'm very good at doing that. Okay, so I'm going to grab another journal, grab another page. Now, is there any questions? How's everyone going? Hopefully you are coming along well. Make sure you take photos as you go. Um, make notes of what you've been using so you remember. So I'm going to put those away. And then we'll have a play with something else. I'm going to have a play with my distressed crayons because I haven't played with these for ages. So the Distressed Crayons, similar to Gelato's, similar to the, um, the Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks, they're all water-soluble crayons and they allow to give you a little bit more control over how you apply the medium but also still give you really brilliant results. So what we can then do again is really simply just add some lines. I'm only going to add two because these have quite a bit of pigment in them and what we want to do is be able to Pull that colour out and then we know that it's going to have, see, a fair bit of colour still there as well. Hmm, and I might just add a little bit of a colour block as well. Something else to have a play with. Do you remember when we did had those stamps that were the solid, solid colours and we'd stamp and then... Oh, the memories. Now that one is not going to be any use to us. Okay, so here's another one. Again, let's just add a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit less this time because these have quite a bit of pigment in them. And again, this is why it's good just to give ourselves permission to play because then it gives us a chance just to get to use our, um, our mediums and get used to them as well. So we can see that that's got quite a bit of pigment in it. So we really don't need to use very much to um, get quite a bit of colour out of it. Now this is a mixed media journal so it does take a little bit more water. If you're doing something that's a little bit um, more of a sketchbook which is fine but again just use a little bit less water and um, if your page buckles a bit then that's okay. Oh I forgot to add the little bit. No that's not going to work. Too busy talking. Okay so what I might be able to do again is just get a little bit more colour out of that and then use that. There we go. Just to create. Now what we don't, don't want to do is do it too much to actually start um piling the the background or else it just gets a bit mucky okay then let's continue but again let's put it somewhere different this time so what if I put a bit of orange there and a bit of orange there and 
And just it is nice to have really smooth paper. You can move that color around. Now I have started with a bit of a contrasting color, but, but we're being brave. Again, these are our own pieces of work. No one ever has to see them. You know, quite often with running the shows and running the mixed media art store here about people buying things and then not wanting to use them. And, and I've been there. I used to be like that. But once you find that suddenly you've got paints that are dried up and crayons that are dried out and don't work anymore, you just you wonder what you were saving them for and realise absolutely nothing. And what I think some people will find who are at home now is when you thought what it was was you needed more time to craft is that you might actually find out that that wasn't what was holding you back. So as we continue to have a little bit more time, we'll be able to carve out our time. We need to be ready to use it. And that's what I'm hoping these Craft With Us sessions will do, is be able to bring us together, catch up, and, oh, cool. Okay. And, um, yeah, just spend that little bit of time together. Okay, so that's two. I might do one more. What would I like to play with? Okay, I might get a couple of card fronts out. And what I'm going to do this time is play with, so these are um, the Mar Art by Marlene watercolours. Um, I have got a set of travelling watercolours somewhere too, but I've got no idea where that is at the moment. So whether you've got true watercolours, whether you've got mediums that you can add water to, or whether you've got these sorts of um, watercolours or mediums, it doesn't matter. Now this one has a really cute little piece of paper where you can put the colours on, because as you can see... Matching the colours and what they actually look like is quite different. So I really do encourage you to make swatches of all your um, different mediums. And also if it's something that's important, if it's see-through or translucent, then do it over a piece of text as well. And then that'll give you a chance to really understand the colours and how see-through they are, how much pigment they have in them. So when you go and do a project, you won't be surprised. So if I'm watercolours, again, just have that really nice, because they go on so smoothly. Now again, I've got a whole heap on my brush. So again, I might just pull this one back and just paint a few little squares. Um, oh, I thought of another way that I wanted to show you too. So again, just a couple of different colours. And what does that need? I feel that almost needs a bit of a darker blue maybe. Hmm, why don't we try some of this one? Just a little bit. Mm, they're very similar. That's okay. Um, yeah, so another thing that I wanted to show you... Um, so when we did, where's the other one? When we did this as direct to paper, you can still see where the lines were. If you want to do it and get more of a smooth watercolor effect, but with your crayons, what you can do is grab an acrylic block and then actually just scribble some of your medium straight onto the surface and then activate it with your brush and then pick that colour up and then again you get that that same watercolour look but without that, that extra bit on it. And then make sure you wipe that clean or else we'll end up mixing colours. And then again that can be repeated with the next colour. And what you find is that some have more pigment than the others so sometimes you can get sort of different effects out of it. That one's crumble a little bit, but that's okay. We can still get that to work. There we go. We'll set that aside and have a play later. So you can see how that works. Another thing that you can do, let me find another colour is um, again make sure your paintbrush is really clean for this one let's actually apply it directly onto the gelato now we want to make sure that that dries before we put the lid back on but again that's another way to um, pull the color up off it oh that's interesting it's quite a dusty pink 
compared to the other one. Yeah, so there's lots of ways you can use your mediums, whether it's pencils, whether it's well your soluble crayons or your H2Os. There's all sorts of different ways that we can do that. So that one's still going to need a bit of drying. Let's see. Now this, I don't know whether you'll be able to see, because this is the twinkling H2Os, it's got just a tiny bit of sheen in it as well, which is quite cool. So Okay, so let's just let that rest for a minute, pull out our pens. Now, how are we all going? All having fun? We've still got everyone. Excellent. Now, I hope you're not just watching. I hope you will give this a go at home as well, because that's the whole point. We want to craft together and learn our medium, share what we can create, and really just inspire each other so we don't feel quite alone at this time. Now, okay, you can see that. So what I'm going to do next is start with this pen. So I've got a Micron pen. Um, again, any pen will work okay. We just want to make sure that it's dry or else we're going to ruin our pens. And of course, we don't want to do that. Now, we want to add some doodling. What do we want to do? Now, the YouTube video just really did start by you know, adding just some little fine lines. So this is where, you know, there's no need to rush. We can just take our time can be as neat or as free as we feel we need to be. Okay, now let's add some circles. So I hope you're going all okay in these unusual times. I'm so thankful we managed to get the Geelong show, the Geelong, I should say Bendigo show, done and like I said on our Monday video we're going to wait another couple of weeks before we decide about packing them and we keep hearing things everything from three weeks to six months so goodness knows goodness only knows so let's do a zigzag and look when I look at it closely I sort of think oh that's not all that neat but again that's not the effect I'm going for I don't have much patience for colouring in with thin pens. Okay, so what else does it need? I think because we've sort of got lines this way, I'm not really thinking of anything sort of across ways. I'm sort of keeping it up and down. Which I think we can probably do some more, you know, some really, some bit of rough lines. Maybe we could do a line of scribbly text. So for those of you that don't like your handwriting, don't worry. Now what I'm going to do is just sit this here to make sure that I don't smudge what I've already got. So scribbly writing lesson 101, what we're going to do is just think of some words and then just do it really loosely and have the words tumble over each other. So today is our first craft with us. And there we go. So how's that looking? So I think it might add a little bit of white. Now, finding the ultimate white is always a bit of a challenge. This one's a white Posca pen, um, which I was really struggling with. And then I've had other people that use them and really love them because they were getting great results. So I think, again, you've got to have a play with it. You need to just see what sort of work you're trying to do, how opaque you want it. That looks okay on the darker background. What else can we do? Hmm, okay, maybe we can do a few dots in here. I really don't trust those pens to do much more, but I guess we could try and draw a line. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on everyone. Um, let's try. A oh yeah, that kind of worked. Okay, see, sometimes you just have to be brave. Do a few little flowers, a little leaves, I should say. And 
I actually don't really like that finish at all, so I'm not going to add any more of that. Let's made it look a bit, maybe when it dries it'll look a bit better. Okay, so, and on we go. We can create some little flowers. You know, I really do find in times of stress, it's good just to do a few practices of these things, just on blank pieces of paper or in just a sketchbook. So you've got them all together, but there's absolutely no pressure to share them with anyone. You know, and it's easy for us to feel like we can't draw. And, you know, especially things like faces, they are such a challenge. Okay, I'm actually quite liking that. But see, you can see that white's really sort of um, faded in too. So I'm really not that impressed with that. But what I might do is just let it dry before I go over it. That'll be a good way to ruin our pens. Now what I was going to do with these little ones is... um. Again, just give them a bit of a, a loose border. And perhaps just to put a few little, little flowers in the corner. Hmm. Those, this one's not quite a square, so let's make it into a circle. And again, all these little doodles are things that you can then go and use in your art journals, you can use in your card making. And um, I really do find that practicing your lettering really does make your hand steadier as well. And it really gives you a chance to explore with a few different things. And so when you go and do your main work, You've, um, you've already got that. You're practicing those things as well. Um, oh, I could always, you know, add some alphabet. So you could always turn this into something a bit more. Again, no patience at all for colouring in with these sorts of things, but you get the impression. might do some lettering some other time so there you go that could actually be enough I'm wondering if that just needs a little bit of something else so I might just add some words I know again I'm just going to put something down so I don't smudge this I'm going to write that's just the lid in this together because we certainly are all in this together at the moment so there you go now what else have I got here that I can have a play with so I've got the card that I did first off so again we sort of done the horizontal lines there so whether we need I've also got this gold pen so something similar. So Pinterest is also a fantastic place to go and get ideas for little patterns, for doodles. I found quite a few bullet journals and planner tutorial guides for different things hmm. if you're no good at drawing something draw a lot of them and again just practice with those circles there we go Perhaps just a little bit of gold, just to use that as a bit of a feature. There we go. So that's just added a little bit of gold to it. And then the other one that we did with the distressed crayons. So that's 
mostly dry. So again, this is probably one of those activities you need to do the backgrounds first and then come back and do the drawing on it later. Now I'm worried that this is going to get lost because this is quite a fine pen. What else have I got? Hmm, let me see. The other thing that we're in reach is just a plain pencil. So let's see what we can do with this. Hmm. So again, well, this hasn't blended quite as well as the other one. So I think the um, I prefer the twinkling H2Os in this at the moment. Circles of varying sizes. Oh, what if we did something that went horizontal as well? What would that do? How does that sort of tie it together? Hmm. I don't know if it needs much more really, just the colours are also pretty. Um, what else? I guess we could always put in some scallops. How we give it a bit of a border. Just a few more lines. Just a little bit of a word. Smile. Because I think we need to try and do a bit more of that today. That always makes us feel better. So there you go. There is a couple of backgrounds using the watercolours. So twinkling H2Os or whether they're water soluble, whether you've got gelatos, distress crayons, scribble sticks, whether you've got watercolours, um, a few of the other things that I grabbed that I didn't use. I've got, oh here they are, I've got just um, some aqua pencils or some Neocolor 2. So these are similar crayons to the scribble sticks just with a bit more pigment in them. Um, all these things are things that you can be using just adding a little bit of water um, you could also do it with your acrylic paints. Again, gives you um, a similar result as well. So there we go. So, okay, now let me just have a quick look through. Definitely agree, the more you practice your line work, the better. Excellent. Thanks, Scrapping Old Style. What else have we got? Strobing, or do you have an overhead light? Do you think the light's helping or not helping? No, that's not helping. Okay, we'll definitely have to work on that. No, no overhead fan. Okay, so let me get you back around. Okay, so the technology has mostly worked. I hope you enjoy playing along in the crafts with us. Um, if you like them, let us know, leave some comments, anything else you want me to give it a go. See, that's still strobing. I reckon it's the new Facebook update on my phone because as we know, technology changes and it doesn't always help us. So, I'm oh, Pauline, I'm glad to see you're having fun. So hopefully it's given you a time to step out of your day of everything that's going on at the moment, just putting again some time for craft, listening to music, distancing yourself from the news. Look, it's just changing so fast and it's really important that we keep up to date but also just for our own mental health and that of our loved ones we need to give ourselves some clear headspace as well so don't be too hard on yourself if any of this craft stuff is feeling very overwhelming or you just don't feel like it um, again there's been all sorts of posts about how we really are going through a bit of a grieving program you know process we're sad things are changing and we don't always um, oh look must be nearly time to go home the cars are arriving that's how I know that it's heading on to home time. They're home a bit earlier today. So get out your watercolours, get out a few different mediums, have some fun. Please take photos and pop it in the Papercraft Posse group so we can all see what you've been up to. Like I said, if you've got any ideas of what you would like to do in a craft R Us, please let us know. And hopefully we can come together every couple of days and just check in and see how we're going. So. The other thing we were doing was collecting a, a, a list of online resources. So, oh, sorry, Heidi, <laughs> couldn't quite keep up. Yeah, the painting's deteriorating. That happens if your 
painting doesn't need to take as much water so just make sure that paintbrush is really dry and then just do it really lightly or find a bit of a more robust um, mixed media journal which will help you out so yeah if you have any hassles let me know getting together a list of resources for online um, activities and tutorials because what I find is that we all get used to following the people that we follow and we don't often hear what other people um, are doing so let's all share our resources and um, let going I will see if I can improve the technology for the next time we're together um, as you can imagine it's all a new playing field for all of us so this is Michelle Brown signing off I hope you have a crafty day